In alhamdulillah. Indeed, all praise is due to Allah. We praise Him, seek His assistance, and ask His forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evils of our own souls and from the evil results of our actions. If Allah guides someone, none can lead that person astray. And if Allah leaves someone to stray, none can guide him. I testify that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah alone without any partner. And I further testify that our Prophet Muhammad is Allah's worshipping servant and messenger. People of Iman, observe taqwa of Allah as he rightfully deserves and do not die except submitting to Allah and Islam. Mankind, observe taqwa of your Lord who created you from a single person and from him created his spouse and then spread from the two of them multitudes of men and women. Observe taqwa of Allah by whom you make requests of one another and do not sever ties of kinship. Indeed, Allah is always watchful over you. People of Iman, observe taqwa of Allah and speak words that are correct. If you do so, Allah will guide you to perform righteous deeds and He will forgive your sins. When a person obeys Allah and His Messenger, he will achieve the greatest success. Indeed, the most truthful speech is the Book of Allah and the best guidance is the guidance of Muhammad, may Allah grant him commendation and protection. The worst things are those which are invented and then claimed to be part of Islam. All such inventions are considered bid'ah, all bid'ah is misguidance, and all misguidance leads to the hellfire. Servants of Allah, you must observe taqwa of Allah by fulfilling his commands and avoiding his prohibitions, and always remember that you will have to meet him. If a person does not attain honor from taqwa, he will be unable to attain any true honor. Servants of Allah, life in this world is one that contains tests, trials, changes, and alternation of nights and days. It is a life that contains lessons for those who take heed. It contains times of happiness and sorrow, ease and difficulty, health and illness. True well-being lies in Allah granting you His protection throughout that all. Ibn Hibban collected a hadith in his Sahih from Rifa'a ibn Rafi' who narrated that Abu Bakr as siddiq may Allah be pleased with him, once ascended the minbar and wept. He then said Allah's Messenger, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, had ascended the minbar prior to this year we are in, and he wept. He then stated, beseech Allah for pardon and well-being. After being granted certainty about the truth from Allah, no one has ever been blessed with anything better than well-being. Ibn Majah collected a hadith in his sunan from Abu Hurairah, may Allah be pleased with him, who narrated the Allah's Messenger, may Allah grant him commendation protection, stated, There is no supplication a servant of Allah makes that is more virtuous than, Allahumma inni as'aluka al-mu'afata fi dunya wal akhirati. O oh Allah, I implore you for well-being in this world and the hereafter. Therefore, no blessing after Tawheed and Iman is equal to it. Well-being essentially means being protected from having one's understanding and practice of Islam subjected to trials, as well as being protected from having one's body subjected to serious diseases and afflictions. Well-being is a comprehensive term that entails having all undesirable things averted. Well-being is among the greatest of blessings that Allah grants His servants, and it is therefore necessary to recognize its value and preserve it. Servants of Allah, you must implore Allah for well-being and beseech Him to grant you that because it is an invaluable blessing. Regarding some of the preceding ahadith, the erudite scholar Ibn al-Qayyim, may Allah have mercy upon him, commented that they combine the well-being of one's religious and mundane affairs, and a person having matters set right for him in this world and the hereafter only comes about from certainty and well-being. Certainty repels punishments of the hereafter, while well-being repels ailments of this world from one's heart and body. Therefore, all matters of the hereafter were combined into one phrase and all matters of this world into another. It was part of the guidance of the Prophet, may Allah grant him commendation and protection to seek well-being from Allah in both the earlier and latter parts of the day. And latter parts of the day. Servants of Allah, there is nothing that equals dhikr, obedience to Allah over all, when it comes to attaining Allah's blessings and averting His wrath. Dhikr is an incredible means of attaining blessings and averting wrath. 
Allah said, Allah certainly defends the people of Iman against the harms of their opponents. Allah defending them and averting harms from them take place in proportion to the strength of completion of their Iman, their sound beliefs and righteous deeds. Furthermore, a person's Iman and its strength come from dhikr of Allah. The more complete a person's Iman and dhikr of Allah, the more the person would be defended by Allah. Servants of Allah, the Prophet, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, once passed by a people who were experiencing an affliction. And he said, would they not ask Allah to grant them well-being? This is collected by a bazaar from Anas ibn Malik. May Allah be pleased with him. And it was graded suhih by Imam al-Albani. May Allah have mercy upon him. The question posed by the Prophet, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, was one of expressing disapproval and rebuke. It was as though he was telling them, you succumb to this affliction, even though you have with you the effective cure to treat what has befallen you, that being supplicating Allah for well-being. Servants of Allah, one of Allah's troops has attacked our entire world. Its size is minuscule, but its harms are huge. It has spread throughout many lands and traversed vast distances. There is nothing more effective in warding it off than heeding the guidance of the Prophet, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, in which he taught his followers the foregoing remarkable and comprehensive supplications, so as to increase each individual in being attached to Allah and having insight and certainty about him. My dear Muslim brothers, it is also necessary for us to remain tranquil during times of adversity and take resort to him during these times of difficulty. The truly fortunate individual is the one whom Allah guides to traverse that course. Furthermore, Allah himself told us that this is a clear explanation of the truth for all people and it is guidance and admonition for those who observe taqwa, those who continue to fulfill Allah's commands and avoid His prohibitions. May Allah bless all of us by the magnificent Qur'an. May Allah also enable us to glean benefit from the evidences and wisdom it contains and from the guidance of the leader of His messengers. I say this much, I implore Allah to grant His forgiveness to myself, you, and all who submit to Him in Islam. Thus you must also seek His forgiveness and repent to Him, since He is continually forgiving, bestower of mercy. All praise is due to Allah. He originated all people and will bring them into existence once more in the hereafter. He does all that He wants. His generosity and blessings are endless. He repels harms and He averts wrath from us. Good from Him descends to us, whereas bad from us ascends to Him. Our Lord, You are perfect in every way. We have not worshipped You as You truly deserve, and we have not given You the rights that are truly Yours. I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah alone without any partner. And I bear witness that Muhammad is Allah's worshipping servant and messenger. May Allah grant commendation to his messenger, as well as to the messenger's family, companions, and all who remain loyal to him. Servants of Allah, you must observe taqwa of Allah as he rightfully deserves, and remember that he sees you in all circumstances, whether you are in public or private. Dear Muslims, among the necessary components of having correct beliefs about Allah the most exalted, is holding the unwavering belief that Allah is the one who brought this creation into existence, the one who controls and regulates all things throughout it, the one who creates whatever He wills and favors whatever He wills, and that He is perfect, most magnificent, and the only one who deserves all worship. Servants of Allah, the Qur'an abounds with deep wisdom as well as teachings that bring about what is in the best interests of Allah's servants. In the Qur'an, our Guardian Lord informed us that certain adversities may be accompanied by benefits, that certain benefits may be accompanied by adversities, that no one is immune to experiencing harm from something that may bring him happiness, 
and that no one should ever lose all hope of eventually attaining an outcome of happiness from something that may pose certain harms. All of this is because people do not have knowledge about the final outcomes of events, whereas Allah is the one who has knowledge about things that people do not. When a person recognizes that he should feel a sense of relief and he should not think wrongfully about his Lord's decrees, he must not make his heart solely attached to his own plans and arrangements, all of which have ups and downs. Despite all that one does, he can never escape from the things that Allah decrees. When a person is pleased with what Allah chooses, surrenders to Allah, and submits to Allah's preordainment of events which are beyond his own control, that is when Allah's decrees would find him in a praiseworthy state, and he would be granted kindness from his Lord. Along with that all, a person must not neglect the fact that he still has the choice and ability to perform the actions that are required of him. Dear Muslims, Islam urges us to take preventative measures against harms. It has prescribed various rulings to ensure the safety of people, places, food, and vessels. It instructs us to perform wudu, perform ghusl, keep mosques clean, and remove harm from pathways. It permits wholesome things and prohibits unwholesome ones. All of that is done to protect you yourself and protect your surroundings and community. Therefore, do your part to ensure the safety of yourselves, your families, and your communities by placing your full trust in your Lord, pursuing all means that have been prescribed by Islam, and taking all measures that yield benefit. By doing that, you would attain health while maintaining sound beliefs and attain well-being while remaining at ease. Dear Muslims, with your health and safety in mind, the leaders of this nation, may Allah grant them continued direction, have implemented precautionary measures that are based on the guidelines of Islam, even before being based upon modern science. The nation's leadership has spared no efforts in its duty, and we in turn have the duty of assisting our leaders in ensuring our safety by following the directions and guidelines issued and by staying away from misinformation that aims to deceive and demoralize people and also by not participating in circulating such misinformation. I would also like to say to any of my brothers who are ill, Allah's Messenger, may Allah grant accommodation protection stated when Allah wants good for someone, He makes that person experience tests. This is collected by Bukhari. This hadith conveys immense glad tidings to you and also provides much consolation in light of what you are going through. Continue to persevere and hope for Allah's reward. Maintain your trust in the one who created you and is in control of all things pertaining to you. Pursue the means that will lead to cure. Do not lose hope no matter how long your trials may last. And remember that fortunate circumstances can be born from ones of adversity. Servants of Allah, take care of the needs of your brothers who are weak or in need since the difficulties they face are greater. Do not neglect to extend kindness to them during the current adverse circumstances. O oh Allah, you alone deserve all praise. You are the only one to whom we raise our complaint, from whom aid is requested, and from whom relief can be attained. There is neither movement nor strength except by you. We are not the ones in control of benefits or harms for ourselves. We are weak and incapable in every way. Our Lord, we bear witness that if you were to leave us to ourselves, for even the blink of an eye, you would be leaving us to weakness, inability, and error. Our Lord, we do not trust in anything besides your mercy by which you created us, provided for us, granted us many tangible and intangible blessings, and averted from us many harms. Thus we beseech you to grant us mercy that would free us of needing anyone besides you. No one who sincerely asks of you and places hope in you would suffer loss. O oh, Allah, we implore you to grant your mercy to our young ones and our elderly O oh Allah, we implore you to remove the afflictions that we are facing. O oh Allah, you are the one who is capable of doing all things, and you are the only one we can implore for mercy. O oh Allah, we call upon you here in the precincts of your sacred house. We beseech you to grant us relief O oh Allah, 
What we are currently facing has come by your command and it will not be removed except by your command. O oh Allah, you are the most majestic and the most kind. We ask of you, we beseech you to remove the current disease outbreak and we implore you to not send us back empty-handed. Ola, we implore you to not punish us and we know that you have the ability to do whatever you want with us. We beseech you to take control of matters so that they will be in our favor since we are not the ones who regulate them. We implore you to take us towards you and you are the best of whom we can ask. O oh Allah, we implore you to not take our lives due to your anger and not destroy us with your punishment. We implore you for well-being before any such adverse things ever occur. O oh Allah, we seek refuge in you from your blessings coming to an end. The well-being you grant is changing to difficulty. Your punishment overtaking us suddenly and from all things that anger you. O oh Allah, we beseech you to avert from us inflation, epidemics, usury, adultery, earthquakes, adversities, and the ills of all trials, whether apparent or inconspicuous. O Allah, we implore you for that. We ask that of you for us and for all lands of those who submit to you. O Allah, we seek refuge with you. We cannot praise you sufficiently. You are as you have praised yourself. Allah is the greatest. Allah is the greatest. Allah is the greatest. Allah is greater than anything we could ever fear. Allah, we further implore you to grant your commendation and protection to your worshiping servant and messenger, Muhammad. Allah, grant your commendation to him just as you granted commendation to your prophet Ibrahim. Indeed, you are most praised and most glorious. Allah, grant your blessings to Muhammad and the family of Muhammad just as you granted blessings to Ibrahim and the family of Ibrahim. Indeed, you are most praiseworthy, most glorious. And the last of our prayers that are all praise due to Allah, the Lord of all creation.